Okay. So hello, everybody, and welcome back to season three of the Hot Combs and Popcorn podcast movie series, The Box Office. For those who don't know, my name is Bobby. My name is Danielle. And my name is Brianna. And one of the things we like to do here on this series is review movies in Black culture that we should have seen by now, but we just haven't. And after we discuss our thoughts and feelings as millennials, we will rate these movies on a scale from one to five hot combs. And today, we are reviewing A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. This movie was written by Martin Lawrence, Bentley Kyle Evans, Kenny Buford, and Kim Bass. This was directed by Martin Lawrence. This is also the only movie he has ever directed. And it is starring Martin Lawrence, Lynn Whitfield, Regina King, Bobby Brown, and Della Reese. A Thin Line Between Love and Hate had a release date of April 3rd, 1996, is rated R, and had a runtime of one hour and 48 minutes. And a quick synopsis. A fast-paced womanizing nightclub promoter gets paid back in full when he scorns a beautiful woman with psychotic tendencies who will push him for breaking her heart. So, ladies, you know what we came here to do. What are our general thoughts, general feelings on a thin line between love and hate? I, you know... I'm toxic and I'm okay with that. That's all I can really say. I'm okay with that. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. I enjoyed all of it because the truth of the matter is all men do is get each other in trouble and he had no business being in this situation to begin with. So it was a great time for me. I... Would have to agree wholeheartedly. Um, I had a great time. It was, it was a plot twist for the ages for me. Um, I was not expecting that, and it really, it really made the movie. You know, it turned up the heat when that happened. So, I mean, we can, we can get into it. I don't think I have low lights, but whatever y'all. I'll have low lights. I will say, I generally was like, I don't know. Honestly, I didn't have the best time. I think the reasons, I know, I have a feeling why I know you guys love it. And yeah, I'm there. But for some reason, I just like was having a hard time paying attention. Ooh. Yeah. Well, okay. I will say. It took me to the 55 minute mark. Okay. Like, yeah. Those first 55 minutes, I was like, mm. girl, but let's, let's just get into it. Let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, oh, yeah, kick it off, Danielle. Um, here's why I love this movie because I was a little, a little bit bored in the beginning. I will say, I was struggling to write notes for this movie. And then, when the sex scene came and um she was like I have to tell you something I was like what does she have to tell him that's so important like I thought she was gonna say she has a kid or I don't know what she was gonna say and she was like I murdered someone and I'm like whoa like whoa that's not that's not what I thought she was gonna say um and it really that's when I was like I clocked in I was like I am sad I'm listening to what you have to say and for some reason, shout out to Lynn Whitfield because she really plays psychotic great, okay? She ate in this movie. She ate in, in other movies where she wasn't psychotic, but she was supposed to be, you know, the uptight, you know, a little bit crazy. But, you know, this this one right here, Martin Lawrence, he really, he chose the right one because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I have to say, you know, my first note was uh, not that I bet you're wondering how I got here, you know, girl. And, um, I was like, yeah. you know, you actually don't have to wonder too much. Um, the fact that um, Regina King, oh, Regina King, no, that's the right name. 
I don't know why I thought that was the wrong name. Regina King, when she said um, she trusted him to do exactly what he's good for, and he did exactly that, I was like, see, all you had to yeah. do, you were trying to be big player, player. Also, I also really enjoyed it because I feel like men always, men that think they're players are always in their feelings when they get played or when someone doesn't care about them. Like when they get treated like an option, you know, it to me, it was just like, you know, there was a couple of stand up moments, but at first I was telling Lynn Whitfield's character to stand up. Mm. I was like, you know, don't give it to her. Don't give it to him, girl. Like stand up. You better than that. And I was like, actually, no, you did the right thing. You did exactly right. Because it, it there was not even a peep of an idea that she was crazy. Not even no. a little tiny peep. All you thought was that she was like, you know, I've been hurt before. I really don't want to get hurt again. And I was like, okay. You know, that's a good pep talk to have yourself. And then she said, you're okay with me killing with someone? And I was like, and there's the thin line. I was like, and there's yeah. the thin line. Yeah. And we are now here. We are now, the movie has started. And yes. I was on the ride for the entire time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, for me, I, I was like, stand up when she was like, but do you love me? And I was like, haven't you known each other for like three days? Like, and he was also like, that. here, here's, here's, because his character was very toxic. And we know this, like that's, it is what it is. But then when he had to think about it, he's like, yeah, I love you. Like, why, why do men? was my question at that point. But I was also like, girl, you need to stand up. Um, he, I feel like Martin Lawrence plays a, like a similar character each time. Um, but this mm -hmm. one was the first time I've seen him like really get, get it handed to him. He, you know, he was fearing for his yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. Because the character, he, that was the one rule they broke code, don't break. Telling him, girl, I love you. But in order to sleep with her, he knew he had to tell her that he loved her. And so you know that he only said it to sleep with her because immediately after he was on the phone, which is I find Ugh. shows the level of disrespect for you to be doing that in my house, number one, on my on phone. Her phone. Okay, my okay. line. And you're calling your friend. I just, I have a really hard time for feeling bad for people who put themselves in such situations. Like, mm -hmm. sir, you, first of all, the beginning scene when he was talking to all the girls was giving that uh, episode of Big Mouth when um, the hormone monster was listing all of those names. And he was like, you know, we have Sheila, we have Brianna, you mm -hmm. know why we call her Brianna. So, like, it was very much giving that. He was going around kissing his girls. Da, 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 you know, Della Reese was eating them up as Della Reese doing every movie. And then, you know, you could see, okay, Regina King was going to be the person he tried to go after. But let me tell you something. Men just get themselves in trouble. That con that whole conversation they was having with each other, like, that's exactly what you get for being fucking stupid. Like, no one told you to do that. Y'all made this woman a token, a prize, and you got your prize. Play mm -hmm. stupid games, win stupid prizes. I was not expecting, I was wondering when the gun was going to come out in the um the picture of it. I was like, is this a spy movie or something? Like went into it with no idea what it was about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love. Whoever, whoever recommended this, I'm not sure. I remember what your name is. I know it was in a YouTube comment. You ate with this one. At least for me, <laughs> you ate with this one. Because I would have never watched this if it was not recommended and it ate. It ate. Yeah. 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 I too would have never watched this unless it was recommended. I don't know this. I think I'm just personally getting tired of watching the same movie. Like it's always like the pathetic, lowly man that thinks he's the shit and he's not and tries to get with the bad bitch of all bad bitches, manipulates the fuck out of her, gets her and then acts dumb when she literally tries to kill you. I'm sick of it. I'm tired. I, it's it, like, I, I don't know. Like I love the fact that the women in the well at least Lynn Whitfield I like the fact that she was able to like at least shake him up <laughs> rattle him a little bit <laughs> but like fuck I just hate that it even had to get there like I I don't know I don't like go out of my way to watch well let me not I, I was gonna say I don't go out of my way to watch men be dumb but I literally just watched Love Island season six so I can't even talk like y'all are just talking about Love like Island. I can't even like, you know 
you were just talking like about <laughs> that you know, exact like, subject. Yeah. yeah. But the something about this and it being like like hidden and like the 90s humor just really got under my skin. It just grinded my gears in the worst way possible. He just pissed me off the whole movie. Like you're just such a dumbass, bro. Like you're so dumb. And um yeah, I mean, that's all. Yes. But but wouldn't that be the point? Like, isn't he trying to get under your skin? Like, I feel like that was the whole point of the character. Like, he wasn't supposed to be likable, per se. Um, well, not likable, but he wasn't supposed to be. He I, and if that is the point, it depends. I think not in the nineties. Mm. Yeah, That's not the in the nineties. I, I don't think he was supposed to be seen as that type of person. I think Lynn Whitfield was supposed to be seen as the crazy girl. And this is why you don't mess with crazy bitches type thing. I don't think thinking about when this was made yeah. and the type of characterization they did with women and, and what they did with, you know, black men and getting women and da, 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 like we've seen enough. We've seen Boomerang. We've seen how this player player. I think that women watching it was like he got what he deserved. I don't think that was like I don't think we were the target audience. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless we were, which is great. If that's the case, we want to give us a little comeuppance. But if we were, not I don't think we were the. I don't think we were the target audience because mm -hmm. we don't even know for real, for real, if her husband put his hands on her. All we know is that she caught him with another woman. But mm -hmm. you know, look, you could also not cheat so but also not cheap so and the thing is like they the scenes where um he was deliberately being an asshole were supposed to be funny like when he was on the phone right after they had sex that was supposed to be a funny scene i was not laughing i'm looking well, like i didn't think it was funny I didn't it was not funny i think it was kind of like supposed to be played because like we knew like oh something's coming in and he's like having his guy talk i don't know maybe it's I don't know. And you know what? I will say, I think that the difference between um, what I just brought up, the whole Love Island thing versus this, is that like this was supposed to be a comedy, dramedy, thriller. At least Love Island's real life shit. Like, I don't know. But um, real life, quote unquote, whatever, since it's reality. We don't really know all the things. So I think that's what really bothered me is that it was supposed to be fucking funny and it wasn't. Like, I'm just like, uh. until they, until it literally was not supposed to be funny when she's like actually trying to kill him. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, I did like the plot twist, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. So, question, Bobby. Yes. Question, Bobby. Would the crystal bird not have made you give a man a date? Or Hell let him no. take you on a date? No. <laughs> no. Hell no. Because not knowing, all, not, not being heard. Well, not she did stalk him. We're also talking me. about the nineties. We're also talking about the nineties. She did fully. He did fully stalk her. Yeah, he did. He did fully stalk her. But since I don't know, when I can tell something's supposed to be toxic, I take my logical brain out of it, and I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. we're gonna be toxic together then. You know, just like bringing it back to the oldie but goodie, Blackula. Is it toxic that this man walked up to her and oh. said, "Hey, you're my woman from a billion years ago, and you're reincarnated." But what did we say, Bobby? We said, yes, I will go with Amen. you. Amen. Because that, being a vampire sounds that, like this. But <laughs> that is, if you put logic to that, that man has some type of psychosis. He has some type of, if a random ass man walked up to your door and said that, you'd be like, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> but we fell into the fantasy of it because that was the point of the movie. Yep. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to give him excuses. I'm just saying, because I still will walk in with the with the vampire, okay? I don't mm -hmm. change my mind, even yeah. with that explanation. That's still, I'm so strong in that. But I'm just saying, like, I find that for these movies, in order for me to, like, really watch them, I have to separate what's, what's now and what's logical, because a lot of the stuff was logical back then. Just, like, a lot of jokes and stuff were okay to make back then. Sometimes they land, sometimes they don't. But like, I thought that, um, I I think in the 90s, somebody would fold for that. Yeah. Absolutely. Easy. I think yeah. people would be folding for that. 
People um, today probably think, would still hold for that. I <laughs> might have been one of them, but not in this situation. I don't think like the way it happened. I think him showing up to her job would have been my first red flag personally. But I think if you met someone that was like, you know, I like you, da 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 da, and then they took like something that they visually remember you saying or hearing and then they brought it up in a circumstance you weren't expecting and give you a gift I think most people would like that it's just that what had happened was he was stalking her to get a bet done and then then that fucked up the whole like cuteness of it so yeah right. I mean is he fucked up yeah he was annoying as fuck the whole time he was Lil Martin the whole time you know I know what I say he was annoying he, I will say him crying about his car, hilarious. He said, where is the justice in front of a police station? I was dying <laughs> laughing, so sorry. Um, I, it, That was a good kiki for me. But like, the whole thing was meant to be toxic. But I get what you're saying, because that's how I feel about female characters that are the opposite, that are like, I want to be the super strong character all the time. Don't like poetic justice. Couldn't no. stand her. <laughs> couldn't stand her no matter what generation we in couldn't stand her so i get it i do get it okay so then let's let's get into the highlights or should we get into the lowlights first the highlights let's do highlights I don't, I don't i have a question it's not a low light and i didn't i didn't look into it i could have why was his eye red bleeding sometimes okay that's what i said because i was like did i miss a oh that's a I accidentally spoiled the movie for myself because I was so fucking confused about the eye. I'm like, I must have because I did check my phone a couple of times, especially in that first hour. Like it, they were I was struggling. I was like, did I miss something? So I'm Googling, I'm reading the plot summary on Wikipedia, like trying to read until I till where I got. And I that's when I read that like she actually ends up like taking the tires off his car, she throws a brick, and I was like, oh shit, like ugh. So I, I ruined the, the plot twist beforehand. Um, but I ended up reading the reviews after I turned the movie off. And half the shit I was reading was like, his eye is the biggest continuity error that I have ever seen. And I was like, no, oh, for real. Like, like because yeah. watching it, you knew what scenes were filmed together when he had that eye, that bloody eye. Mm -hmm. I think this is my hypothesis. I think when one of i can't think of her name she's like one of my favorite actresses though like she's so pretty she's great uh the one who had the kids i think no oh, oh from, from the game kid. yes her from the game i don't think mm -hmm. it was her i think it was the woman before her i think she smacked him and i think in real life she might have hit him in the eye when she smacked him mm -hmm. and i feel like if i had to make a film educated guess that was something that was at the top of the call sheet to film and then it affected everything else that was filmed because yeah, he right. had it then he had it when she he was in the boardroom and I was like why is his eye bloody in the boardroom but then the next scene when he was downstairs he didn't have it so then like once it happened you could not notice when he had it in the scene so for my film brain I was like oh he probably just powered through it even though it looked like somebody hit him in the face. I can only assume he either got it then or during the fight in the club. But I'm sure it was an accident. I was like, God damn. But the fact that they kept it in, like they must have been strapped for cash because there is no yeah. way that they would have done that on purpose. I don't know how long that would have taken to heal though. That's a good point. Like, I don't know. But still, I wasn't like, in the cash. CGI days for real, for real. And that's like a whole two, three days of filming. But I, I think that's when it happened. It definitely, mm -hmm. I definitely wrote it twice. I wrote it at the beginning and I wrote it at the end. And literally at the end, I said, what is wrong with this man? I, like, I am concerned. And so. But it also wasn't that. It was, I used to have styes a lot. That man has style on his eye too. And sometimes they don't go away for a couple of weeks. So I'm like. He did have something with the other eye. It was like, yeah. this eye was bleeding. <laughs> and then in other scenes, the other eye was like this. And I've yeah. had a style before. And I know it like you can't open your eye. Like you just can't. Hey. I'm like, dang, he was going through it. Yeah. I mean, it was his production. He had to, yeah. he had to do it. Like he had to do it. To. That's probably why he's only done it once. He was like, nah, I did it one time, hated it, never doing it again. <laughs> you know what? He <laughs> ate in that one time. The, whatever know, Bobby says, you know. I I I understand. 
you know I think me and Danielle are here I think we understand really what are. you're saying we understand what you're saying like, it's just that we are not in the same emotional place that you are about it we just kind of like checked it and understood it and then like was like okay well I see nothing's gonna make sense and he's gonna be toxic and that's the point yeah. and then it just allowed me to just watch it yeah mm-hmm. I think it's just been like a lot back to back to back I'm like oh yeah like we've watched a lot of one. womanizer a lot of womanizer we do. movies yeah is it just like the 90s, 90s thing but, like, <laughs> I think it might be because like we hadn't even touched like the love and basketballs yet like that's a whole nother thing yeah it's pretty the way we all rolled our eyes pretty back to back. <laughs> it's pretty back to back I don't think I think the last one we didn't watch was Whoopi Goldberg. I take uh, it back. No, I take it back. Everything we watched this season has a man womanizer. He's either abusive, manipulative, or something oh, yeah. else. Because hmm. I was going to say the color purple, but then like Mister oh. was definitely a whole womanizer. He's beating the shit out of people. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah, I guess that'll do it. Yeah. Well, we didn't make the movie. So- we did yeah okay so let's get into um some highlights then i guess if you guys want to like go down your list well i wrote down my girl was tweaking for real um and she was beating herself up with the orange and banging her head against the closet door it was crazy her scenes of like going crazy were just i don't know why but i was like yeah Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it was it's chef's just, kiss it was chef's kiss when she pulled up kiss. to that man's house right with the brick in the car and the mom came outside and she said hi ma I was like exactly I love it. this is the level of it. psychotic that I want to see she Absolutely. ate Absolutely. Mm-hmm. she ate that down she ate this whole world it reminded me as a, someone who's really big in like horror and psychological horror um that happens a lot especially like in the movie orphan I think like the main character hurt herself on purpose to have to go to the hospital and like obviously watch orphan if you haven't but like she was faking to be regular when she was not regular I just say it like that and so was Lynn Whitfield she was like but honestly back to what I said he should never been in that situation she was trying to push him away she was trying to tell him you don't want this and he was like no I want it and then he got it and now he crying about it. Like, yeah, you didn't got shot, but also you could have not been in this situation. Right. You see what lust will do to you? Mm. Like, if nothing else, that is the lesson. You know what this is? Someone on Twitter was like, I'm starting to think Adam lied on Eve. And I feel like that's exactly what the situation mm. is. Because mm. y'all try to make it seem like she crazy, but you did it. But like, you, so you probably you probably told Eve to lie to on Eve or told her to do it, and then you was like, it's her fault. Now that would not be surprising, honestly, looking at how history has played out. Looking at how the whole book plays out. The look at the, the world. Is meaning. I mean, again, these are the same tropes that are in our current movies today. If you're upset about that then you should take a look into the mirror of your brothers and find out why y'all are still being typecasted in this way. Yeah. This is what it is. I couldn't say it better, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, um, what else for now? I don't know. I'm looking to see if I have any highlights. I did say my girl needs therapy, though. You know? Mm-hmm. You know? Cause you she can't do that with folks. Like mm-hmm. you really need that real bad. Real bad. I, mm-hmm. I hate the um. <laughs> I was about Hello? to use a chronically online word. Um, decuntification of okay. when we okay. okay. I, I literally, you know, we we all know, but I was mm-hmm. trying to find like an actual word. Um. The downfall, um, the regression. I feel like that's mm. a good one. Sister had it all. MBA from Harvard. Okay, let's start there. Yeah. Successful real estate company. Look what you turned her into. Look, 
Well, she it was already there. It was already there. But but she tried to tell him no. She tried to tell he, him. He literally turned her down. And that was one of the things I wrote down. Him turning her down over not wanting to have sex with him is wild. And the fact that Ugh. he did that so publicly, so grossly, and still folded, still said their toxic thing of not saying I love you to somebody and said it to her anyway, just so you can get in them draws. I just, you did this to yourself. <laughs> like, no one did this to him but him. Like, have y'all seen the show <laughs> Why Women Kill? No. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like- I've seen that, <laughs> seen Snapped. Get up, this is it. Because that like, is. like- <laughs> That's the whole episode. You missed her birthday? She, oh. All she said was, he needs to come over because tomorrow's my birthday. And he's like, okay, I'll be there. And then you leave, you don't do that. And you go to your the girl that you've always been in love with. You go to her house and sleep over with her. Of course, there's going to be a cake on your door with a knife in it. Like, I'm <laughs> sorry. We know, we know she's crazy. But so because I don't... I, something I don't understand, and I feel like I might have just said this recently to someone i don't understand men's expectation for women to react to the things they do logically when what they did is illogical like expecting a woman to not snap the fuck off at you because you cheated on her i and this is not he didn't really cheat on her she was just kind of crazy but expecting a woman because honestly i didn't really believe it was her birthday personally i think he, she was just saying that i mean the fact that she pulled up to his house um, and I've never heard him ever give her his address, um, or put up to his job or something like she was, she was giving crazy, but also mm -hmm. like, you can't play with people's feelings and then call them crazy when they react. Like you just, you can't do that. That's what a gaslighter is. And that's how he was acting. Like you literally told her, she told you I'm hurt. She told you, I need someone to, and I'm look, you really got to be able to, you know, me, do you need me? Do you love me? You still trying to kiss on her. Even when she was saying that, I was like, mm, just getting a little crazy. But, mm -hmm. you know, who am I to say? And then y'all finally have sex. And she decides in the middle of sex, she wants to tell you that he she murdered her last husband. You deserve that. <laughs> you put yourself in this situation. Which is yeah. also, like, insane. Because, bitch, if I killed somebody, I'm taking that shit to the grave. What? Not, I never have, okay? I'm putting this on record to the government watching, to anybody listening. Don't come looking for me with that shit. But I will say, if I did, who would, why would you, is it a close case, girl? Have you served your time? Have you been convicted? Because <laughs> you do not know this. People do really girl. stupid things for love, especially in the middle of that dang thing. Okay, like that's true. That's true. She was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! You my new husband because I killed my last one." He was like, "What?" And I was like, "No, no, no! Don't like don't what? jump back now. Don't try to don't try to be like yeah, really you is. have standards now. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. We're gonna lay in that bed that you that you made, uh huh? Because mm -hmm. she tried to tell you this is moving too fast. I don't want to do this. Da 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 da." yeah it's what you get it's what you deserve actually what's what you deserve mm -hmm. run around trace chasing um, tail meanwhile whole time your ass is over here jealous because the girl you actually want is with mr pretty chicken man that that is King. an actual like that's a little like for me okay because she fumbled the bag she really did yeah. and she pissed me off the chicken yeah. king Okay, it's on your doorstep. He got his, I don't even know what type of car that was. He got a nice car. He pulling up. He likes you. He want to take you out places, all this stuff. I just want to be friends because you hung up on this dude that you've known since diapers and that is running around town with every girl. But you're like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to stick beside him. Mm -hmm. And she was going to go back to the airport. She was going to go get some money. And she's like, mm, I'm going to stay here. Because my man. Stand oh, up. You know, she, I'm disgusted. <laughs> she needs to take a book out of Madam Webb's page because Wait. at least she's doing for herself. Okay. At okay. least, you know, things are happening. You over here losing 
First of all, I did write down Chicken King because I thought that shit was hilarious. Okay. Yeah. He said, you got all these restaurants and you came here with a two-piece and a biscuit. Died. Okay. <laughs> That's um, fucking funny. <laughs> I was like, now, now, Martin Lawrence comedy was comedying. Like, when he was actually supposed to be acting funny, that mm-hmm. was, he when he called them people flight light, flashlight cops because he was like, I see you. And they ran into that door. I said, yeah. Yeah, this this good. This good comedy. When he did yeah. that, when he was outside of the um, police department, he was like, where's the justice? He was like, where's the inviting the police? I was like, yeah, this is, this is, this is comedy. But yeah, like, it was just like, half of the notes that I wrote, I have to scratch out now because I understand why she was acting the way she was. So I definitely said I was so mad watching her do a pep talk when he about to play her. Little did I know. Like, scratch low it cold. <laughs> scratch it off. She I was a girl's me. girl. Scratch it off. And then once that happened, I was even more of a girl's girl. Period. I really thought this movie was going to be like, like a, um, okay, not poetic justice. What's the one with Nia Long? Um, oh, wait. Love Jones? Is Nia Long in Love Jones? Love Jones. I thought this was going to be like Love Jones S. Like, he, he falls for her, and it's going to be like, this big love story and no murder we're talking about attempted murder on Mm -hmm. three people Mm -hmm. well murder on one and then attempted on three i was not Mm -hmm. prepared for this and i think that's why i love this movie so much because it really there was nothing really alluding to it there was that one scene in the club where he said something to her and you heard like the little creepy music in the background and i was like oh she's gonna go crazy she's gonna you know smack him around or something murder was not on my mind okay Mm -mm. And I love it. I love Mm-mm. it. Yeah. I literally wrote in two different sections. I wrote, he broke his own rule. I hope she beat him up. And then I had update. That's exactly what he did. And then later <laughs> on, I said, she about to kidnap him. And I love that for her because it's stupid ass. She'll never be in that situation. Again, mm-hmm. I just decided to run on the toxic train for this movie. Do I think that she should be put into an institution? Yeah. Yeah. She should be taken off of the streets. Because yeah. not only was she crazy, she was colorist, okay? And she was not a girl's girl. Like, and she should be in jail for a long time. But she got out, didn't she? Well, see, how did that happen? How do you get out on attempted murder? Yeah, I was really confused about that whole thing. I thought that she was in, and then she wasn't, so. I was <laughs> like, he was like, I hope they fix her brain before they let her back out. I was like, why is she being let out on three attempt, three counts of attempted murder, deadly yeah. weapon? Like there's so many felonies that she caught in that last scene. Not to mention the, mean she the out? car window and shit. Right. My, right. Like he has literally a like She set Arson? the club on Arson. fire. <laughs> like She set the club on fire. I said, oh, this bitch uh, is about it. She is about to ruin this man's life. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh. That is... I honestly... Might be my favorite role I've seen Lynn in, to be honest. Yeah. Um, because she did not give me... Outside of like that music part you were talking about when he was talking to the other girls, she didn't give me mm-hmm. an ink. There was not even a drop of thinking that she was about to do something crazy. Mm-mm. And then she did something crazy. Also, did not know that was um uh what what's that Bobby man Brown? Name? Bobby, Bobby Brown. Brown. I just knew. I was like, he looks so familiar. I was like, why do I know who this man is? And the fact that it was Bobby Brown checks the fuck out because his knees were diabolical in that little montage scene. I was like, oh, his knees yeah. better than so many people's knees today. Bitch, he like, backed he it up. Dance. He did. He was down there. I said. Mm-hmm. He said, this is what I want you to do. And I was like, wait, a demonstration? Like, I said, wait a second. I was, there. I was kind of into it, honestly. I was like, I okay. Was all with it. He was like Listen. up here and then you look down, he's in school, full Megan squat position. I said, oh, okay. that would work on me. You do that to me in the club, I will most likely give you my number. Maybe, maybe. Because you're willing to embarrass yourself for me. Okay, maybe. I love that for you. <laughs> if you're cute. You're cute. If you're cute. I love that for you. Yeah. Um, I, I was gonna say, I don't think I've seen Lynn Whitfield in many roles where she's not a mother. Honestly. That's what I put down too. So mm-hmm. this was fun. 
I, I still, for I couldn't get mother out. I mean, mother, but like mo mother, I couldn't get that out of my head for a little while. I had to remove the, uh, the Tyler Perry and put it, put it down. Wasn't she in Cheetah Girls? Yeah, she, she was, was also, wasn't she? Who's, was she? She was in Galleria's mom. Galleria's mom. Was she? Mm -hmm. That's how I, I know her. She, yeah, was, I think she was beat and dressed Mama the guy. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah, because she was in the second one. Did she go with them too? Yeah, uh, she was in the all. Yeah. Anytime I, Galleria was in it, she was in it. Was <laughs> like, it. wow, it's all coming back. I girl. haven't seen the Cheetah Girls in a while. Um, but yes, it's all coming back to me. Lynn Whitfield sure was in Barcelona. Running over there with um, um, Chuchi's mom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know wow. it's giving like she to go from the cheetah mom to crazy psychotic. Well, I guess backwards, crazy psychotic to cheetah mom is really range. It's range. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lynn yeah. Whitfield ate down. I literally have nothing bad to say about her as an actress. Like. Uh, the lady, she can just do it. Like, you give her anything, I bet you she will turn that shit out. You will get your money's mm -hmm. worth with Lynn Whitfield. That's for sure. Like, she got it down. She has, like, the perfect, um, like, poker face. And she can just move them eyes. I know Tyra's proud of her. I know she is. That lady can smize down. Yeah. I feel like um, all the actors in this, I don't really have like anyone in mind that had a bad performance. Like, I honestly think that everybody kind of, kind of ate their role. Like even Martin, even though he was kind of annoying to me, I that again, I think that was what he was supposed to be doing. Um, oh, I peeped. What is his name? He played Tommy in Martin. Oh, was what he? Was in yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, not Tommy. Um. I know who you're talking about. You're talking about from the folk, from the folk flow, from the, you're talking about him. Oh. You're, um, talking, about, you, you're talking about Debo guard. from, oh, you're not talking about Debo. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm talking about I thought Tommy. you were talking about uh, Brum Man for the Fake Yes, flow. him too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, and also, Tracy Wait. Morgan was a fun surprise. Oh, yeah, Tracy Morgan. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, look at you. The best part of watching these 90s movies are seeing how famous people have gotten and like become since then. Because, like, mm -hmm. you talking about Tommy? I didn't know Tommy was in that movie. I didn't even recognize him, honestly. What's his real yeah, name? Was... I always forget. His real name is Thomas. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> his real name is Thomas. I. He was one of the security guards, was he not? Am I bugging? A thin line. I don't remember seeing him. I remember seeing Debo. I think that's Debo. Well, I know it's definitely Debo from Friday, but I think that's also Brumman right. from Fifth Floor. But I could be yeah, wrong. He, he was, um, what did he play? He was um, the guy in the club, right? Tyrone, yeah, the really tall guy. And then Faison Love. I was like, okay, oh, yeah. I see you. You out here. You up in there? Did he ever give us $40? Hmm? I said, did he ever get his $40? No. No. Dang. I don't think he got the girl or the $45. Damn. Dang. L after L after L. After L. L. After L. Yeah. So I, I don't think he, he did well. But he played his part. He did. All I could see was him. I think that's the... Is this the same person? You know, they be trading actors in these movies. It'd be like the same person in every other movie because he was in Friday with the curlers. Yeah. Oh! I'm pretty sure. Wait. Faze yeah. on Love. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it was Big Worm. Big Worm in uh, Friday. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> Come on, Big Worm. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, oh, something, okay. I do have a low light-esque thing that I just, I don't know where it is, but I found it now in my, my notes. I want to know why stuttering is a trope in 90s movies. Bro, I'm yeah. so curious to know why, especially it's always male characters stuttering. Like, what is that? Like, okay. is that like... It's, 
to me. It's giving ableist just a little bit. Just a little bit. No, it's bit. definitely, it, it's giving like ableist without directly making it about like the tism. Almost. Also, I've noticed that it's been predominantly dark skinned buffy men that are doing this. Yes. Yeah. Is this like some kind of way to like, um, um, dem what's the word? Emasculate them? Is that like probably they're trying to make them because they or whatever? They he only gave him props when they were talking in the circle area. He was like, "Wow, you talk better with us about this than anything else." And I was like, "Why is there always like a stuttering character? Like, is that yeah. like?" And on top of that, they're supposed to be the butt of the joke. Mm -hmm. Always. is really fucked up, actually. Because <laughs> there were definitely a couple kids um, that I knew that had stutters. And they stayed getting bullied, made fun of for the way they talk. Like, mm -hmm. I I hate it. I, 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 <laughs> I hate it. That, that whole trope mm -hmm. is so tired and I'm glad that as a society we have moved past that because it's mm -hmm. in seeing it now it's just weird as hell yeah, yeah it's just like it's something that is I see way too much and I just don't under like I would just really like to genuinely ask somebody is that was that like a default comedy thing like dick jokes and stuff to have someone with stuttering like I know that I don't think one of the three stooges studied stuttered but I know that you see a lot of that in like comedy and it's like you know like stuttering doesn't mean someone is stupid right like y'all do y'all do understand it's just a speech impediment mm -hmm. or do we not know that are we not like yeah. adults yeah. to know that it's like, clearly fucking... yeah it, it's clearly not somehow in watching all of these older movies like I definitely have gained some of somewhat of an appreciation of uh, how far we have come as as it's related to like film and television because um yeah like I I highly doubt that we would ever see something like that today and um I also highly doubt that we would see well, let me not say highly doubt. I regular doubt that we would see like a character like Lynn Whitfield start where she started and end where she ended and without it being like so sensationalized. Like, yeah, we can still have like femme fatale characters for sure. But like, I doubt that it would be as frequent as like we have seen in the 90s. Um, at least some of the stuff that I've seen. I haven't seen a lot of like, I don't know Netflix they'd be putting out like 10 shows a day with all these streamers like it's hard to cover the entire playing field but um right yeah like seeing some of this stuff from the 90s that like we find cringy I'm happy that like we see it less often now because like some of the shit they were just doing whatever they wanted and no one checked them ever so yeah I feel like a lot of these movies I can walk away with the understanding and appreciation of what it did. I don't have to like it. I don't have to watch it again. But I can understand like, oh, okay, this was made because of this and it did this. And that's like, that's exactly how I feel with black exploitation. Like I understand what it had to do for the film industry with black people. I understand its purpose. I don't need to watch it. I don't need to because it's already made it it's already made its impact and I've seen it and it's a great impact. I don't need to watch it. But I love that people love it. But I that doesn't mean I have to love it. Okay. Amen, sister. Um, do you guys have any other highlights or low lights? Mm. No. I like um, the the ladies night remix in Chocolate City. I would go to Chocolate okay. City. That seemed like it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was cute. Chocolate in there. City it was, was like jumping. It was cute. The ladies night remix. I was like, mm. but Chocolate City didn't have a lot of dark skinned dancers. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, 
if we can get into the colorism yeah. quickly because yeah, well, sure. colorism is gonna be a thing regardless um i noticed that out of all of his girlfriends only the natural hair girl that was also a little bit darker was like slightly more aggressive and slightly more comical than the other girls which mm -hmm. bothered me you know but i was like yeah 1996 okay mm -hmm. i mean i can only assume whether consciously or not that is why lynn whitfield's character was the way that she was because mm -hmm. she was the light skin skinny woman with the stretched out hair that you know is a businesswoman you know usually they are the ones that are the goal right and so I'm assuming I can only assume if he knew Regina's character for so long he probably ain't treat her right at some point and it sounded like he did fumble a bag and it was probably because he let his friends talk him up and make him fumble the bag and all these things and so then he saw Lynn Winfield he was like oh you are the trophy right and so that's why I said like although she was although she was like playing that role and I did not disagree with much of what she did because if you're gonna be crazy be crazy I did not appreciate the fact that she called Regina natty natty headed I was like now what that gotta do anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sam. Mm -hmm. Mm. What I gotta do with anything? Just cause her hair is a different texture than yours. I mean, she was really on the colorist train, if you will. So you know, I was like, mm, that's very ugly behavior. But whatever, whatever. She, she like, act like it was normal. I mean, yeah. I cannot mm -hmm. expect more than what the '90s has already provided us. Yeah, I've like... already seen it. So like, <laughs> when like... I see it, I'd be like, yeah, that sounds correct. Yeah, like, what do you expect, honestly? Like, we only just started talking about colorism in, like, 2016, so. Like, yeah, yeah, you definitely, I think that's why, you know, arguably, that's why the, the turn hit so hard, because mm -hmm. she was, like, this well-put-together woman, the trophy, if you will, sheepish, don't want to give it out type thing, and then, you know... He got his comeuppance because that's what that's what happens when you make a bet, sleep with somebody that you don't know. Like in the bet and the bet. Okay, listen, I don't know how deep y'all were into fan fiction, but it really just reminded me of, okay, to all the listeners, I'm so sorry to bring this up if you know what I'm talking about. It really just reminded me of the Harry Styles fanfic after have y'all read it? Uh, <laughs> I didn't read it, but I was on Wattpad when it was out. And it okay. was, I okay. myself was deep into the One Direction fan fiction. So I am very familiar with After. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen, I was I was there every week when she was updating. I, I was there refreshing mm -hmm. and reading. It was a great time. Um, listen and then they put that movie on netflix no it became a book and now it's on netflix by the way one of the worst movies i've ever seen in my life yeah i heard it was pretty bad which considering the fact that like it was made for teenagers by like a grown woman on a wattpad-esque sharing place and then you tried to make it like oh uh, this is not 50 shades of gray like this is not 50 shades of gray wasn't even good like let's let's start there I well, I mean, like the adaptation wise, like the ad oh, okay. the adaptation for that movie made sense. But like the reality is you are selling something that's toxic as fuck to teenagers. And we didn't understand that. We didn't understand that Harry Styles, which was not Harry Styles and after, but we didn't understand that she, he was creepy as fuck. Creepy as and they fuck. were inappropriate as fuck. The age differences was inappropriate as fuck. Girl, like, we just didn't understand it. Making like, bets with Zane if you could have sex with her or not. I was like, God. Honestly, every time that trope comes up, I only think about that fan fiction. I, I just can't, I can't get rid of the association. And I just had to say something. It just had to be said. Yeah. After, and I don't know if you, those, those size, size, I don't know if you know the fan, I don't know what it's called, but it was a fan fiction where they wrote a book in the perspective of you dating each one of the One Direction guys mm -hmm. in a relationship because one of them, it was like, you would read as the girlfriend of Niall and like you was pregnant and all these things. Um, it, yeah, yeah. I love it. it. Was, I love it. Cause I, I read my same part. I did. 
did. Yeah. I, did. Yeah. I also yeah. read one where his name was a dark angel and yeah. he like yeah. kidnapped you, but it was Stockholm syndrome and the movie st- and the song Stockholm had just really came out. Uh, I'm, I'm exposing myself. Yeah, I'm no, exposing it's, myself. It goes deep. Okay, I wrote a couple myself, but I it did. was great for us. Yeah, for teenagers. It oh. ain't. I it's just feel different like, watching something like this. We're not teenagers. <laughs> it, it, it. The NCAA. <laughs> that was me. Okay, <laughs> that was me with the with the mindless behavior fanfic. Mm. So okay. I can't even. I just feel like if you've ever loved anything to your core, regardless of what it is that that, and you have been willing to read fan fiction about it, the shit is serious. Like it's a big deal, and tread yeah. lightly. And yeah. you look over toxicity. You you if anything, you step in. You step into it. to being toxic because you, when Harry you, burned that girl's house down, bitch. <laughs> Well, yeah, because in the fan fiction that I was reading where you got to be like the girlfriend, you have twins with Harry. And like, why am I as like a 14 year old, 15 year old having twins with a grown man and like talking? It was it it's excessive. I got into the Larry fix a little bit later on. Uh, that was my toxic. Uh, I'm so glad the Larry phase is over. Me Annoying. too, because I read a really nice annoying especially because then they made Zayn the villain of everything which mind you okay he did do some villainous things he did lead, he did break up with you know period over text but you know look things were happening it was a spicy time a spicy. Um, He's like 17. but I will say mm-hmm. Harry and Louis did not help the Larry they did not help the Larry allegations um but I also think American girls are not understanding that like masculinity is a totally different concept in yeah. other countries and it just they weren't like together they just like it wasn't like a thing for them to not act a certain way anyway yeah, we're still we off didn't track. get it we we are very off topic and we um are about that time for our final ratings um <laughs> so final ratings y'all final ratings you want me to go first or you want to go first go first i feel like we may let's say it at the same time Zoom oh. might cancel it out for the sound, but I oh. feel like it might be similar. I'm going to, wait to until y'all go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ready? One, two, three, four point five. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well. Well. That well. close. I'm gonna okay. take it. I, Danielle, I was... you went five. <laughs> <laughs> you went <laughs> three yeah. fingers. Yeah. Said five. She did. She, <laughs> I said 4.5. She said three, five. I said, okay, well, you know, <laughs> timing. Okay. Zooms. Wait. They do that. Okay. You because know? I forgot I had my hand up. You know, I was going to one, two, three, and then I forgot. Oh, to do one. okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't yeah, know yeah. how to count. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Only reason why it's not a five for me is, um, I don't know. It just, to me, it's not a. It just don't get five. It's not. It's not like a perfect movie, but I would rewatch this like multiple times. Mm-hmm. It's just not like I don't know. It's like I think we gave Color Purple five, like the original Color Purple or something like that. We gave something all together a five. Yeah. Like you know, it's not the five heartbeats, but I would watch that shit again. Like I would watch this. It's this is a good ass movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I agree. I will rewatch this at some point um I gave it a five because I feel like I have different categories of five like like we said the five heartbeats we did the color purple I can't think of literally any other five that we gave out soul food. but oh soul food and um coming to America oh yes coming to America the original? so yeah the original the yeah I don't think you gave the second one maybe either. Friday too Friday might have been I, five. I think I or like a 4.5. Yeah. Okay. Like um, but I feel like I have different categories of, of fives. And this one is in my comedy thriller um, category for a five. Because none of the movies that we watched were really like this one. Um, and I feel like it's it's it gave me what I needed. Because, you know, like I said, in the first they re- he really had me in the first half I I was got and I was like oh 
this is going to be, you know, just another, just another movie, another little comedy. And it was not, baby. It was not. It was a thriller comedy. So for me, it it gave the excitement. Yes, Brianna. Mm -hmm. Can I say, I also think Danielle is like a romance girly, like a romance movie girly. And I'm not, which I think is probably why it's a difference. Because when I went into it, I was like, here we go yeah. watching another movie about the man finding the girl who he's going to fumble. And the, also thought it was a spy movie. Oh. Fair. Oh, from Fair, the cover? Based off of the, the cover. I thought it was Can a spy we? movie. That would have been fun. So the fact that it ended up being into my category, my favorite psychological thriller horror is my favorite. Like I'll be watching Snapped. I'll be watching all that good stuff. So once it turned into, oh, I'm actually finna like kidnap you. It once it turned into misery, basically, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is it for me. I just think that um, I feel like if this didn't have that plot twist, I think Danielle's score would still be higher than mine because I think she likes romance stuff more than I do. I do. It's just that it met us both in the middle, and we were like, okay, we're on the ride together now. <laughs> like now we're sitting next to each other and we're going. <laughs> like it was, mm -hmm, it was good, 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 mm -hmm. good, good, good. Yeah. um bobby yeah um honestly i would have to agree with what y'all said specifically you danielle i don't agree with your rating but i agree with what you said okay i just view it from a different perspective i feel like that yeah so there's this review that i found on letterbox that i just feel so compelled to read because it just really um it's short one paragraph and i will say this girl did not rate it she just left the comment <laughs> which I felt was real as fuck. And I quote, I'm not about to sit here and go as far to say Brandy was right because old girl definitely took things way too far. That being said, Darnell spent the first half stalking her when he can, when she confides him that her past trauma has made her afraid of trusting him and tries to have a heart to heart about him. Wait, I did not edit this for grammar. When she tries to have a heart to heart with him about her fears, he lies to her. And is constantly pressuring her into having sex through guilt tripping, manipulating, and lying. And then acts surprised when Brandy gets mad at him for the stalking, guilt tripping, manipulating, and lying. It's a cautionary tale, obviously, but damn, is that boy a dumbass? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, she ate in in quote. Honestly, like, like every she cleared it. Book. Um, and so because of that, and because I'm just like. I'm just tired of watching ev all of these fine women, all of them, just throw their whole shit away for these scumbags. No, I gave it a 1.5 on Letterboxd and I'm sticking to it. I'm gonna give it a 1.5 hot combs. I am, I am. I'm sorry. Are you out of it. your mind? <laughs> are, you, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so I'm giving it a 1.5 instead of like I think I gave Boomerang like what like a two or 2.5. The Bobby. reason I'm giving this one a 1.5 is because it didn't change my life. It didn't change my life, and I wasn't moved. I wasn't. What What was the one the one movie that we watched and everybody was jumping on us? Oh, uh, Shaft. Yeah. Shaft. You're giving it to so me a Shaft. A Shaft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I so really... sorry. We must not now edit our description. This is no longer a safe place. Danielle! Danielle turned off like, the camera, what the... This is no longer a safe space. Like, what the fuck is happening right now on this podcast? Yeah, like, I don't know, bro. Like, I, I just... I, I, tried to, I tried to be there for you. I said, you know, I get it, you know? I didn't even rate Poetic Justice that low. Like... I thought poet and I did not like poetic justice. I didn't. So you think this is below poetic justice? Um. Yeah. Think about okay. it. Uh, okay, and I will say, and yeah, I thought of I yeah. This is the thing from like a technical perspective. Whenever I rate movies, at least like for leisure, for fun, it's like ninety. Uh, it's like eighty five percent based on my feelings in the moment. I will say the first time I watched Waiting to Waiting to Exhale, I gave it a three because of where I was. And last time I rated it like well, I like got four or whatever. 
I don't know if I gave it a five, but like I could, I would rewatch this movie. I would, um, in a different point in my life. And I, the rating may change, but it also may not change. I don't know. I feel like we've seen the men that, you know, womanize, whatever. We've seen the plot twists. We've seen the femme fatales. I don't know. I just wasn't moved. I wasn't shaken. Uh, even Lynn Whitfield couldn't save it for me. Sorry, Martin. And, um, yeah. My last note that I made when it ended, I said, thank God it's over. Yeah. <laughs> I did not like it, bro. So, yeah. And also another note that I had, this is a little bit aggressive. Um, I said, what they're doing to Lynn Whitfield's character is my 13th reason. Like, I really was so pissed. I did. So, oh my God, uh, <laughs> Brianna left the Zoom. It wasn't um, good. So this this is the most controversial episode we have ever had. This oh I, she's back. Okay, <laughs> she had to take a breather. Um, I really don't think I, it's that controversial. I, like. A 1.5? Yes, I thought also, I will say, like, I don't like Martin Lawrence either. <laughs> I don't, like. No, it is anyway. I don't think his comedy is, or his humor is, like, my lane. So. This has been, you know what, Bobby? You said that you didn't, you didn't really like it from the jump. I didn't like it. I don't know what I thought you were going to say. I thought maybe, like, a, a three, you know? I thought you were going to say three. Three's too one high. way too high mm -mm. nope for it to be oh a three God. I would have had to like have it be <sighs> okay and this is hard because I can't it would have to be a little bit more realistic and I hesitate to even say that word because like it's a movie you know mm -hmm. Movies aren't necessarily supposed to be realistic. Like, I love fantasy. Sci-fi is my favorite genre. So, like, I even hesitate to say that. But because this is not a sci-fi movie, this is not fantasy. This is right. rated, This is rooted in realism and comedy. It just don't make sense. Like, it really does not make sense. You're, you want to convince me? You want to convince me that a lady who got a master's degree runs a business that she cares about is willing to throw her entire life away for him you'll never convince me that's the most realistic part of the whole thing no i, I think i i well, would maybe. argue to say you have too much hope in society i've seen people ruining their entire life over an extra sauce at mcdonald's mm -hmm. i just I don't understand why you expected more from society that you would you would hope that she I'm a pretty optimistic person. I'm not even going to lie. And me personally, I'm watching this movie. Okay, actually sidebar that this this is going to go on a slightly bit of a tangent. I was talking to this guy, straight cis man. Okay. I don't talk to a lot of straight men about dating. And every time I do, I'm always shook, like floored because none of my, me and my friends, we don't act like that. We do not act like that. He was talking, talking, telling me about like, you know, how girls like constantly ghost and, you know, they're all about money and, you know, super superficial and, it's all about like texting every day and getting like absolutely like they go off the deep end when you go multiple weeks without speaking to them. Like they, they just be saying like whatever. And I'm always looking at him like, are you being dead ass? Like there's no way that people could act like this. And then I forget, like I'm not like everybody. Everybody's not like me, you know? So maybe it's me and my own perception and my own bubble. Um having to keep that hope that like I'm gonna stay sane and maybe y'all be sane over there and I'll be sane over here but I don't know I don't know maybe it's something similar to that 
that's all I have to say. But I, I'm sticking to my rating. I'm not changing it. You you stick beside your rating. Um, you stick beside them. Stick beside. I don't. I don't have to do it. That's yes, you. You you got to stick beside them. I don't have to stick beside them. Um, can I just ask? Can I just ask. And I I guess I I can definitely sound probably more pessimistic than you are just because um. You know, I lived that life of Omegle and things. So I've seen oh, the same. depths of society. I also did. Um, did you feel no type of way of him getting what he deserved? Um, No, I definitely knew he was going to get what he deserved. He deserved it. Well, you also oh, spoiled right. it for yourself. So I did, but that didn't affect my rating. I was already pissed. <laughs> that happened. I, I spoiled it probably like halfway through, but before the, the plot twist. Whenever that happened, it was like right before the plot twist. You know, yeah. I love that for you. Yeah. I, I truly love that you have faith in society to the point where you don't want to see it in movies. You know, I, I love that for you. And I hope that that never gets ruined for you. Um, because it's been ruined for me. And actually, like I said, I've seen I've seen people go to jail over chicken nugget. You know, like yeah, yeah. Well, like, I've I've seen people do things that I deem insane, insanity. And I think part of the reason why I don't like this is because, like, well, actually, I would rather say it off camera because it has so much. To it's personal. Yeah, like I have examples that I want to use, but they're not. Yeah. They weren't approved examples. Okay. As to why, like, because this I, is triggering so AF. It pissed me off. Like, think, too close to home. Well, I was also going to ask that, but I did not feel. I mean, unless you wanted to bring it up, I was like, not this on must camera. be something that. This must be something that's hitting you personally, because it is not hitting me personally. I mean, no, it, I don't feel like personal, like about like the the plot but i will say well no like i've been around people and things have been said to me that are similar to this but i will say i don't like this movie not because it's personal if that makes sense like i don't like it because i don't like the character he was unlikable i hated him he sucked i hate what they did to lynn but that doesn't have anything to do with me i will say i just recognized similarities in my own life if that makes sense but yeah i guess that's it y'all hold on so thank you all for listening again i've been bobby i'm danielle and i'm brianna if you haven't already done so please follow and subscribe to us on youtube tiktok instagram twitter spotify apple podcast buzzsprout and anywhere else you get your podcasts throw us a like share this episode and please leave in the comments have you seen this movie did you see it when it first came out and what are your thoughts like i i genuinely want to know and let us know what movie or television show you would like to see us review next or what movie you would like to see us review next and as you guys got to know, the streetlights have actually been on. We are overtime. So we'll see y'all next time. Same time, same place. Goodbye.